Hello everyone, my name is Spitfire, and welcome to a reaction uh, to Konosuba in d d by Blaine Simple. I seen this video pop up on my feed about a month ago, and I thought I would try to wait until I was back into the reaction game to react to it. And here we are. I've been looking for another animation channel, kind of like with like d d stuff I found Puffin Forest about a year ago, been watching his stuff forever, and I've been trying to find something very similar, but I think this might be the great channel, because he, uh, they talk a lot about D&D stuff, so... I also have one more announcement. I know in my other video, the redirect, you guys are probably not going to watch it, but... In that video, I said if I reach 200 subs, I will eat this spicy chicken ramen that a friend gave me for a goal. So if I hit 200 su subs, I will eat this in my next reaction film whenever I hit that milestone, so... Be on the lookout for that whenever I hit it. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, Konosuba is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, I am now watching the uh, um, the anime. I read the uh, reading the manga as well. Um, really love it. Very funny. Very fun. Uh, it's getting a dub pretty soon, I believe, where it's like already in production, where it's already kind of out in some places. So I can't wait for I mean, this three uh, to rewatch it in the dub form. So yeah, it was it's pretty fun, uh, and I can't wait because it's interesting. They're interesting party, so um, just can't wait for them to talk to it. And be like, how do they actually fit into a campaign where? You know, designing characters around them, because I am a D&D player myself. I actually help a lot of new players decide what characters they should play in the world, and I made some fucking crazy characters thanks to uh, you know Matthew making some really crazy you know ideas, and I've been using most of his stuff throughout my years of uh, DMing and playing. Uh, for, you know, years. So, I just can't wait to see what he says. Uh, without further ado, let's, uh, get into this. Go. Hey everyone, and welcome to the video. Here we go. Today we're going to be discussing character builds in D&D &D for the popular isekai anime, Konosuba. Konosuba is a light novel series and yes. anime made by Atsume Akatsuki. The show features a main character cast of Kazuma Sato, the Jack of All Trades, Megumin, the yes. one-shot magician, Darkness, yes. the masochist crusader, everyone's favorite. and Aqua, the useless arc priest. And Our job is to favorite. recreate these anime protagonists into characters within the D&D universe. Before we can right, start though, go. we need to set some ground rules. A more detailed rule set will be in the description below, but to save you time, here's cool, the gist. That. I'll be using the anime and fan wikipedia for character information. We'll be okay. making these characters as adventures league legal as possible. Stats will be rolled with point legal, by, which is good. levels will good. be as low as possible, and none of these Points. characters will have their backgrounds filled in. Alright, now that no that's out of the way, no let's one get uses the backgrounds rolling. anyway. Megumin. Megumin calls her race the Crimson Demons. Since there's no demon race in D&D, and Megumin mostly resembles a human, Unless you want to go with fan stuff. Shall be. Her power no is demon. mostly magic no based in which she summons flaming death from the sky to massacre everything in its area. With my greatest guess, I'll assume she's a wizard. How high a level wizard? Yeah. Let's take a look. There's a few things to know about Megumin's explosion magic. Firstly, it takes her a few seconds to cast a spell five, based on how long her summoning spell takes. This changes every time she casts the explosion spell, which means the blast can come off either instantaneously or after a brief Ooh. channeling time. The explosion also leaves a large crater in the earth. Although no spell in D&D creates both flaming death and craters, we can at least know that the spell yeah. is a sphere. Based on that, a spell like this in D&D yeah. would need to be a ranged spherical fire spell with concentration. I looked around for spells like this and found one called Delayed Blast Fireball. The spell says that yeah, you point to a location and a little bead of flaming death spawns where you are pointing. When the wizard decides to end the spell, the bead explodes into a massive 40 foot diameter sphere centered on the bead. The neat thing is that the spell does more damage Whoa. if you can concentrate for a long enough period, which means that when Megumin would use this spell, she'd obviously wait the full duration before exploding for the extra damage. So we found yes. Megumin's explosion spell, that. but what about the rest of her character? Well, in order to learn Delayed Blast Fireball, you need to be at least a level 13 wizard. So just for that, Megumin will also need yeah. to be a level 13 wizard. We're level also assuming wizard. that Megumin is the same level as all the other girls, so they'll all be level 13s as well. Alright, stat time. All right. Megumin has a plus Stats. 2 in strength, because even when she casts Explosion right next well, to herself, wizard, so she can stand her ground against uh... the blast. 
unlike Hoth. Hoth. This would also give her some potential to fight with her staff, as quarterstaff takes strength Hoth. to flail around. Her dex would be a zero, no fancy reason why. Her con would be a plus three, well, she is but 13, it would keep so. her concentration on explosion better. Intelligence would be a plus five, so that explosion can deal as much damage as possible in one spell. Finally, Makes wisdom sense, yeah. and charisma would be a zero. The only really big thing now is what school of magic she would be in. I knew right off the bat that she wouldn't be an evil cant mage. That's always hard. I'm actually reading through the school the show, magic right now, so literally good to learn some more information about the uh, school of death. That didn't then when actually plays wizards in my campaign, which, which was good to, to learn some the wizard stuff. War magic. War magic gives the wizard who joined the school M powerful abilities in both avoiding death and dealing it. Makes the sense. main reason Megumin should be in this class Makes is for the ability Makes Power sense. Surge, which lets her use a surge to empower Power her next surge. attack with extra damage. Along with that is a passive ability yeah, called Durable Magic, which gives Megumin a bonus to her AC when she concentrates on a spell. This would give her yeah. some extra survivability while focusing on getting to the big boom of her explosion spell. The rest of Megumin's spells are pretty standard, and by standard, I mean non-existent. Seeing as she oh, doesn't she use anything she else. Off of she only notion, uses that, she's yeah. She's only slightly yeah. useful while flailing her quarterstaff around, and completely useless after she casts her explosion spell. Assuming we gave her a flaw where she can't move after yeah. casting a spell or, or something similar. So we know what the glass True. cannon would look like in D&D, but what about the immovable wall? Let's talk about darkness. Darkness prides herself on being literally unkillable. Nothing yeah, can leave a dent on her, making darkness the perfect frontline. Cleric? I'll start with her ability scores she first, because her class is a little trickier to understand. You'll We're know why in a minute. Darkness is a level 13, and part of the variant human race. This is so we can keep certain stats Paladin. from getting increased, while also maintaining her humanity. Darkness's strength and dexterity is a negative one. Now I can already hear you saying, Oh, but Darkness is buff, she can do like 500 push-ups! And you'd be right. But we're not focusing on that. Rather, I'm trying to recreate her flaw of poor accuracy. This is so Darkness yeah. has the hardest time landing blows on enemies. Now, her con is a staggering plus 5, giving Darkness an extra 5 hit points every level. This will be important on the meat portion of the wall. Due to her position as royalty, and yeah. my extra points in point buy, Darkness gets a plus 2 for intelligence and wisdom, making her particularly right. knowledgeable. Finally, her charisma is a zero, for obvious reasons. Now, Darkness <laughs> yes. is a variant human, meaning she takes a feat instead of a plus one in every stat. And at level eight, we gave her another cool. feat instead of an ability score increase. The two I chose okay, were Touch, sense. wait, no, not Touch, that'd be weird. Tough, there we go, where every Tough. level up you get an extra two hit points. We're on our way nice. to becoming the tank we were meant to be. The second feat was Great Weapon Master. The interesting thing about this feat is that yes. it lets you take a minus 5 penalty to your attack rolls for an extra plus 10 damage if it hits. That means that if we use this ability for every attack, Darkness will suffer a minus 6 to all of her attack rolls, giving her the highest wow. chance to miss physically possible for point by. In order to hit any target, she'll either need to crit, or the enemy she'll will need to be a stagnant rock. Her flaw of poor accuracy has been created. There's just well, one tiny problem with this that would thing, actually suck that you need a you heavy weapon to use this ability. Have to get I guess a, we can just bulk up our sword a little bit more, we'll assume like, she time. has a great sword. Now we can get to her class. You'd think Darkness would be a fighter, right? Or a barbarian, or a paladin? Well, there's a big yeah. problem with that. Fighters get proficiency with every weapon in the game. Since proficiency but she might be a gives a bonus too. to attack rolls, that would mean Darkness would cleric. only get a negative 1 onto each attack instead of a negative paladin. 6, giving her a better chance at hitting. The class I found to represent Darkness the best was a monk. Monks get d8s for their hit dice, which isn't too bad, and the Path okay. of the Open Hand yeah. gives her a powerful self-heal ability called Wholeness yeah. of Body. She can insta-heal for 39 hit points the second she uses the skill. Her other abilities include oh, catching nice. missiles, falling off tall things uninjured, spending things called key points to run around and strafe attacks endlessly, avoid fiery death with her evasion skill, speaking every nice. language in the universe, and using the Don't Touch Me spell Sanctuary whenever she feels like it. Though, I don't doubt she would. Spell. She also may have the ability wow. to climb up walls and run over water, but don't quote me on that. Monks get a lot of their viability by stripping naked and using unarmed strikes to slap their opponents silly. Since Darkness yeah. uses a great sword and plate mail, most of her monkey abilities are flushed down the toilet. Which is good because we're making copies of Konosuba characters, not Naruto ones. Well, the whole wow. idea for Darkness was to have a character that would be nearly impossible to kill. With that in mind, yeah. how much HP does Darkness actually have? Well, a considering lot. we take average for every time she levels up, that would give a base HP yeah. of 68. An extra 65 hit points from her constitution alone, yeah, her and another 26 hit more. points from the feed tough. That leaves us with a whopping 159 hit point tank. That's a lot of hit points. armor and a sword that almost never hits. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> so that was actually pretty close to her original character I'm design. Actually, I'm actually run Aqua, that. Though? Let's take a look at the type of goddess she'd be in D&D. Be fun. Aqua is the goddess of water in Konosuba. We don't have a goddess yes. race in D&D, and since she seems no, to resemble yet. a human in Unless stats you power, use, like, human some fan shall stuff. Be. She'll also be a level 13 to meet the level of everyone else. Now, her yeah. stats begin with a minus one in strength, just as bad as darkness, also, with her reasoning being that she literally flies away to one of Megumin's fireball spells. Her dex is a plus one for her skill in spinning her goddess staff. It did take a modest light of hand roll to spin something like that. Her constitution is a plus two, just to help her out in makes not sense, dying. Makes sense. Her intelligence is below human with a negative one, wisdom a decent plus three, and charisma a strongly staggering plus five. Now you're probably right, wondering so why Aqua's charisma is higher than her wisdom. This would make less sense if we were making a oh, real please. D&D character. It fits Aqua's design to a T. Yeah. She spends a lot of her points into worthless party tricks. So in D&D, it didn't make a lot of sense for her to waste points specking first into social stats. Aqua then yeah, completely so throws out one that. of her ability score increases and gets the feat skilled instead. Since the girl is pretty varied in her talents outside of being a cleric, and because in the manga yes. she's apparently good at sculpting and painting, I used the skilled feat to give her proficiency in performance, painter supplies, and pottery. That's a lot of peace. Alright, All right, ability yeah. scores down. But what about her class? Well, she'd obviously be a cleric, but what domain cleric? Okay. At first, I thought it'd be the Tempest domain due to its affiliation with water, but realized a while after that the Arcane domain gives something that the Tempest domain doesn't. The Arcane domain gives the cleric within it two wizard cantrips of their choosing. <laughs> nice. Now, this may sound like nothing, in. but to Aqua having it's precious education and minor illusion is a must-have. So go she can also banish dude. one creature in range that's, that's not two? from the same plane of existence back to their own. It sort of makes sense for a goddess to want to expel all the demons and devils of the world. Aside from that, Aqua is a pretty standard cleric. A bit weaker than a normal cleric because of her charisma, but someone who can make a killing performing in a tavern or something for profit. Just remember to get inflict Fine. wounds and nickname it God Blow. Then you'll be all set. Alright, I left the worst for last. This guy took me a long time to figure out. How to stitch his varied abilities together into a single person, exactly how many levels would go into each of his multi-classes, hmm. and how many points he'd need to multi-class in the first place. Regardless, I think be? I figured it out. So without further ado, let's get into Kazuma. Fighter. Kazuma is the main male protagonist mm. in the anime Konosuba. His quirk is that unlike many of the other characters becking into a single tree of abilities, Kazuma focused on branching himself out into a lot of different talents. Along with yeah. that, the guy has an absurdly high luck stat, letting him get away with some pretty notorious stuff. So how exactly would someone like <laughs> yeah. this be possible in D&D? Well, let's break it down. We'll start with his ability scores. Oh my gosh, I'm opening his character pamphlet up now and I'm just crying on the inside. Alright, yeah, so Cosma is a 9th level human. Yep, that's right, 9th level. If we're basing this as close as possible to Konosuba, Kazuma is roughly only 3 fourths the level of his female companions. Kazuma gets to 9th level by going a standard human and taking one feat instead of his only chance for an ability score improvement. His strength is okay. a plus one for all that shut-in exercise he gets. His dex is a yeah. plus three so that he can sneak around and steal. <laughs> his yeah. con is a poor zero, making his level 9 body even flimsier. His intelligence yeah, is a wow. plus two because of his quick wits and cunning. His wisdom nice. is a plus one for multi-classing purposes later. And his charisma is a plus yes. two for having Might all of the that. girls fall over him. The feat he needs is lucky. As if the name didn't already explain it, Lucky lets yeah. Kazuma re-roll 3d20s every long rest. This is great for always getting the roll you're looking for, almost assuring you'll never fail. That's now Kazuma's classes are where it gets tricky. This guy starts <coughs> as a level 3 arcane trickster rogue. That means he gets okay. an invisible mage totally hand so. that he can float around and steal with. It's a little creepier than the steal spell from the show if you think about it, but that's the yeah. best we can get for D&D. He also gets a few wizard so, spells. Now Kazuma also has to spec 5 levels into wizard to get 3rd level rogue. wizard spell slots. <laughs> One slot wizard. in particular goes to learning Gust of Wind, a spell he apparently gets in the manga. I mean, Kazuma also enters the have. school of divination magic, which lets him roll wow. 2d20s and record the results during a long rest. Whenever he'd like, he can use those rolls in replacement for any d20 roll ever made in game. Now Kazuma well, has five D20s that's... that he can fudge before every long rest. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. From Kazuma's that's pretty arcane trickster spells and wizard pretty spells, great. he's able to cast Ray of Frost, which acts like his free spell, Firebolt, which will pretend is his Tinder spell, and Invisibility, yeah. which resembles his Lurk spell. Since Wiz also taught Kazuma Drain Touch, we can add on a similar spell called Vampiric Touch. Kazuma could also learn a lot more magic than this, so just as a bonus I also gave him Mage Armor, Shield, Mirror Image, okay. and Blur, so that he can dodge right. attacks to make it seem like he's oddly luckier than normal at avoiding injury. 
The final level Cosmo <laughs> nice. has, he shoves into Cleric. Apparently, Cosmo okay. gets some sort of ability to tremble and shape the ground later on in the manga, so we need to spec him with a spell that can do that. With one level in Cleric, okay, cool, he can now cool, cast cool, cool, Create cool. Water got, and the Cantrip Mold Earth and Thumaturgy. I placed him in the Order domain because he's really good at bossing people around. Having the use of Command is great for this. The Heroism yeah. spell keeps him strong in battle, as well as Intimidation proficiency to scare people off. Now, if you're serious right, cool, on making cool. Cosma exactly like the original, you can obviously pretend he doesn't have Mage Armor, Shield, Mirror Image, Blur, Command, or Heroism spells. But when you're Just four levels below everyone else stuff. in your party, I'd say it's roughly fair. If you're looking to be Just similar to Cosmo stuff, in the so. anime, as in D&D though, you can always omit them. There's no rule in D&D that says you can't not cast magic. Anyway, that's yeah. about it. I'm really intrigued as to how all of these characters would Unless work you play with a bad in an group. actual campaign. And so I'd commend anyone who'd group, go out of their way to make something back catering to a party of oddballs group. like this. If you'd like to download their character sheets, I'll lot. be linking them down below. What character do you guys think I, I should do next? I have a story to Check tell you. Check out my you. Patreon to vote on polls and stay updated. Want to get notified when the next video uploads? Subscribing not only helps you out with that, but is insanely helpful for growing the channel. Don't no worry, I would like, like, like to like the video and I subscribe and to I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya. Have a story to tell. I'll tell you guys in the outro. Yeah, it was an interesting video. Uh, remember, I haven't got too far into the books for mostly, I just mostly just look up the classes that people want me to play, and then I read it out to them, like, this is what you need to do, and it's how you can do it. Uh, but yeah, it was really interesting to see something happen, but I have a story to tell after this, but this is actually really fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it, learned some information, and this had some, like, really curious, big like, what classes would they actually be? And I didn't know he would actually be a multi-class, and that's one thing I'm like, we have to, that's what I'm doing right now, is reading about the multi-class system. Like, how many times can you multi-class, what can you multi-class to, and what level, and if you want to do it or not, so it's very fun. But I had a story, uh, in my older group for another kind of similar game therapy, uh, for, uh, similar game to D&D, where it was more roleplay based than, uh, you know, the typical D&D stuff. Uh, I had a party of me, I always like to play some sort of elf in, in D&D, so I was, uh, I was an elf rogue. I, we also had, we had a, um, a dwarf, uh, pyromancer is, uh, the class he goes in this, and he would basically get any excuse that he could to either burn something down or blow it up. And you can see how good that was. Uh, that was only like a year of game time, but it was still fun. Uh, we had another, uh, player, but I forget his class. But it was always interesting to see how he took, cause he got into this character. Like, every time he was like, can I catch this on fire? I remember we had to like sneak into a tavern, and he wanted to like, cause a distraction that would most likely burn down the tavern. So we wouldn't do it, and it burned down the tavern. Uh, but it was, uh, yeah, this was an interesting video. I can't wait to see this other, you know, his other content. And, yeah, most of the other videos are like 7, 10 minutes. I can do like 2 in a while, so I thought this, I saw this, I thought you guys would interest, I thought I, I liked it. I thought you guys would actually see it were really interesting. And to see how this, like, turns out, but this was actually really fun. Uh, see you guys in the next video. Like it, dislike it, who fucking cares? Uh, see you guys later. Fuck you. Bye.